Welcome to Movie Making Moments, a showcase for some of the greatest narrative beats in cinema. Believe it or not, breaking down the climax of a three-hour film that was itself the climax of a 22-film saga was quite the undertaking, so A, if you haven't watched that Avengers Endgame episode, I'd kindly ask you to do so, and B, I think I've earned a less demanding subject for today's follow-up. So let's dive right in and discuss a scene from... <sighs> my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> Casablanca is about the condemnable nature of neutrality in the face of evil. It primarily focuses on saloon keeper Richard Blaine as he forsakes his selfish cynicism and rejoins the fight, but for this episode we're going to look at a scene centered around Victor Laszlo, freedom fighter extraordinaire and impressor of half the world. It's my duty to see that he doesn't impress the other half. As Laszlo begs Rick for the letters of transit that will allow him to escape the Third Reich's clutches and continue his work in America, their argument is cut off by the sound of a tinny piano playing in the parlor downstairs. Laszlo investigates to find main villain Major Strasser leading his table of Nazi officers in a rendition of Die Wacht am Rhein. The patrons of Rick's gin joint are all visibly disheartened by this demonstration, but feel powerless to do anything about it. Laszlo, on the other hand, won't stand for the intimidation and immediately marches to the house band to demand that they play the French anthem Le Mas as in retaliation. They do, and the entire establishment joins in, drowning out the Nazi song. For such a simple act, it's remarkable how much Casablanca's plot is altered by this beat. Strasser is disturbed by this unfortunate demonstration, and ends the film-long standoff between himself and Laszlo, threatening to send him back to occupied France or to end his cheap human life. He also demands Rick's cafe be closed until further notice, permanently disrupting the primary setting of the film and livelihood of the protagonist. Play La Marseillaise rattles the very foundation of the story, just as it makes the audience more invested in its characters and the hardships of the people around them. It accomplishes all of this through Victor Laszlo. While Paul Henry gives an excellent performance throughout the film, Victor Laszlo is not a terribly complex character. Dramatically speaking, he's simply an obstacle between Rick and Elsa, and thematically, he's a little more than a moral compass to influence the misinformed citizen of the world. He doesn't have an arc or any flaws, the plot happens because of his presence rather than his actions, making him something of a living MacGuffin, and his fate is placed entirely in the hands of other characters, namely Ilsa and then ultimately Rick. All of this is perfectly fine for a supporting character to be clear, but this approach does run the risk of contradicting the established ethos of Victor Laszlo as the single greatest threat to the Third Reich, and since the stakes of the film rest almost entirely on this lofty label, the discrepancy between Laszlo's role in the story and his role in the story's world could completely undermine the narrative scale. That problem is resolved by Play La Marseillaise. Laszlo seizes his moment and gets a massively important beat entirely his own. He proves that he is, in fact, the powerful figure we had been promised by instantly igniting the people's dwindled passion and rallying the crowd around him with a single act of bravery. Among this crowd is Ilsa, Laszlo's wife and Rick's former sweetheart, and through her, Play La Marseillaise also successfully strengthens the romantic side of the film. Since so much of the story rests on the drama between Rick and Ilsa, Casablanca spends much less time exploring the relationship between Ilsa and Laszlo. While Ilsa shares some insight with Rick earlier in the film, and we're shown a lovely quiet moment between the spouses later, this is the scene that firmly establishes what Ilsa sees in Laszlo, and why, in the end, she belongs with him, not Rick. In just three simple shots, we join Ilsa in her admiration. Another woman of note here is Yvonne. This rather minor character is introduced as a lover of Rick's whom he callously tosses aside early in the film. In response, she later defiantly enters the cafe with a German officer as a date. While the aftermath is not depicted on screen, the implication of Yvonne's tearful singing here is pretty clear. She's gonna end things with her fascist friend promptly. Of course, this through line of spitefulness towards an ex, followed by lashing out with misguided apathy, culminating in the rediscovery of a moral center and higher calling, cleverly echoes the arc that Rick himself is in the midst of. In fact, Play La Marseillaise as a whole echoes Casablanca as a whole. The refugees trapped in the titular town are an ever-present composite character of the film, collectively representing an entire continent's plight as Nazi Germany conquers more and more of Europe. Throughout most of the runtime, they're depicted as miserable and lost as they wait and wait and wait to hopefully find freedom in the Americas, but for Play La Marseillaise, they rise above their despair and fight back in a small but still very meaningful way. The aforementioned shot of Yvonne is particularly moving. 
Real world information further enriches this wonderful scene because many of the extras featured were in fact themselves refugees who fled the Nazi invasion of their home countries and ended up in Hollywood. While this show is dedicated to praising the construction of fiction, I think knowing this background adds a profound level of authenticity to the scene. Play La Marseillaise is a terrific moment of hope and resistance. Watching the people force a pitiful band of Nazis to sit in resentful resignation is deeply satisfying in a sadly timely way. It's an invigorating jolt of optimism in what, beneath the humorous writing, has been a deceptively bleak movie up to this point. While certainly bolstered by all the context I've given here, I would argue that Play La Marseillaise is so dramatically complete in of itself that it could be appreciated as a standalone short film. One that would be a beautiful, distilled microcosm of Casablanca's inspiring message and enduring themes. Thank you so much for watching Movie Making Moments. This video was one of three that I put up for the channel's launch. The other two are linked right over there and in the description. Uh, all likes, comments, social media shares are gonna be genuinely appreciated, especially because I'm just starting out with this. You can follow me on Twitter, at SCaptiville, and of course you can subscribe if you want to see more. I plan to do one of these every other week, but I'll be back next Friday with a video on Terminator 2 Judgment Day. So I hope to see you then.